Hello everybody, I'm Dan. Welcome to my Java tutorial series. Throughout my tutorials I'll teach you Java using just Notepad and the command prompt. Now the order in which my tutorials are organized on both my website at javacjava.com and my YouTube playlist is designed to maximize learning by building on concepts from prior tutorials. This tutorial is part one of my assertions tutorial series. I'm going to open up my web browser to my website javacjava.com, select begin, and I'm going to scroll all the way down here to my assertions part one. Now, have you ever written some logic into your code and you stumble into a situation where you almost know for certain that a condition will never happen? Almost is the keyword, right? Um, do you put a lot of print line methods in your source code in the early stages of development only to comment them out or remove them completely? Now, if the answer is yes to either of these above questions, then the assertions are the perfect production source code debugging tool for you. Assertions are built using the Java keyword assert. Now, consider the following code. Class assertions one, I've got this local uh, or this instance variable string state. Um, and then in the constructor, it's taking one single parameter here, and that's a string value state. And I'm setting that equal to the, uh, you know, the instance variable state there. So uh, in the main method entry point here, I'm simply creating an assertions one object. AO is the reference variable, and setting that equal to a new assertions one object. I'm passing in the string literal yes for the constructor, right? So at that point, our state should equal yes. Now, in the above code, um, in the above, in the code above, are we fairly certain that our state for the AO object will equal yes? Oh, sure, why not? Everything appears to be in order. Now, being the thorough programmers that we are, we decide to put in a quick if statement to alert if the unexpected occurs. Now we have the resulting code. So right after we create our object here on this line, I'm just going to check to see if the state is not equal to yes, right? If it's not equal to yes, I want to display to the console, uh-oh, unexpected result in state, and then plus whatever the value of the state is there. And you'll notice I didn't encapsulate this or anything like that. I didn't want to like clutter up my tutorial with getter methods there. So, But anyway, uh, not quite exactly proper as far as encapsulation goes, but you get the point. We're not demonstrating encapsulation here. We're demonstrating assert. Now, when we rub, run the above code, we get... Uh-oh, unexpected result in state, and I left these as question marks, and I'll explain that in the video. But the point here is not that we received an unexpected result. The point here is that we have an if statement in our source code that shouldn't be allowed into production code. That's this right here. We never want the end user to see the message, uh-oh, unexpected result in state, under any circumstances. So we will have to either comment the if statement out or remove it prior to production. There is no other solution, correct? Now, assertions to the rescue. I'll demonstrate that exact same thing above, only we never have to remove our debug logic, and better yet, we can enable our debug logic live in the field on production code. Now, here is how. So taking our if statement, we're gonna replace that with an assert statement. And here's our assert statement right here, assert, and then in parentheses, we're testing for a Boolean result, and then, well, I'll explain that here in this paragraph here. Let's break down the assert statement above, okay? The assert, and then inside of the parentheses, and then AOR reference variable dot state dot equals yes portion is evaluating a Boolean result from the expression, what I just said right there. Now it is important to note that an assert statement can only evaluate an expression that returns a Boolean result. It is no different from an if statement in that respect. Now the next thing you will see is a colon, right? Here's our colon right here. So um, an if statement, right, will evaluate its um, a code block <clears throat> if, the, of, uh, if the expression returns back true. Now, it's kind of opposite in, in the respect here with the assert statement. If this returns false, then it will go ahead and we'll, we'll just say execute this right here. But it's not really executing, so I'm going to explain that here. So the next thing you'll see is a colon, and after the colon, you can have whatever output you would like displayed to the console, sort of. Now, in reality, the assert mechanism simply throws a new assertion error, and then whatever your output is into the construction for the assertion error, right, which is this right here, okay? Um, if the result of the expression is false, say what? Now, that's right. If an assert statement evaluates to false and assert error is thrown, and your program will come to a crashing halt. Now that is a good thing, and that is precisely what we want when we use an assert statement, right? 
because just think about that for a moment. You know, we've got a program. We're, debug, we're debugging our code live in the field, and the only reason we're doing that is because something's been brought to our attention that's an unexpected result. So we want it to crash and halt the program code right at the point of the unexpected result. Okay. Now, remember this. By default, the JVM will ignore all assert statements. We have to include, include a special flag to tell the JVM to enable all assert statements. And you think about it carefully, you would only want to do so when an unexpected result has occurred. In order to enable assertions, we simply include the dash EA or dash enable assertions flag when invoking the class using the Java command. Something like this, Java dash EA assertions one. Okay, enough talk. Let's jump right in and see how it works. Let's come down here to the source code. Hit control C to copy or right click and select copy. <coughs> Move my browser off screen. I've got a shortcut to the command prompt on my desktop, but if you don't, you can create one really fast by right clicking, selecting new, shortcut, CMD next, and finish. It's just that easy. Let's go and open that up. If you're new to my tutorials, first thing you want to do is type in Java C, which is a Java compiler command. You should see all this stuff scroll by. However, if you receive an error message, watch my tutorial on installing and configuring the Java development kit. You want to make sure you get that done properly before continuing. CLS to clear the screen, cd space backslash cd short for change directory backslash tells it to go to the root. I'm gonna make a directory here with the md command called java. And I already have that folder, but if you don't, I'm gonna go ahead and create it for you. I'm gonna make another directory here, and I'm just gonna call this uh, assertions1. Okay, let's change directories to assertions1, and now I'm gonna notepad assertions1.java. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and paste in <coughs> paste in my source code there. All right, so basically I've got exactly what we talked about there. Um, the first thing I've got is, is what we would normally start off with with a debugging message here, and you finally get to see the, the result of my somewhat uh, tricky little code that I designed it that way, you know. So let's, let's see what happens. Why does this fail out? Let's clear our screen. Java C to compile it. Java to run it. Right, and no flags on this, we're just gonna run it normally there. And we get, uh-oh, unexpected result in state, and we get null, yes, right? Okay, so um, I, I designed that by, by design there. I did that by design. So basically, an instance variable, when you create an object, an instance variable that's an object will get it initialized to null. So at this point in time, this is no different than saying null. It gets implicitly initialized to null. Now I put in plus equals here by design, so when we pass in yes, we get null plus yes. So that's where our value comes out, out right there as null yes. Anyway, so it's an unexpected result, hence the whole point of this whole entire thing here. All right, so um, let's go ahead and, and that, that's why that did that, okay? So it's not equal to yes at this to, to print that out, okay? Now, of course, we wouldn't want to leave this in in production. We never want even, even if the code continues to run, we don't want the user to see this message ever, okay? So let's go ahead and just remove that, replace that with the assert command here. Let's come up here and save this. All right, um, let's clear our screen, let's recompile, and let's run it. No flags or anything, right? The program runs and finishes, nothing is displayed. The, the end user doesn't see some sort of bizarre message, right? But, you know, um, let's say we're, it's brought to our attention the program isn't functioning normally. So all we need to do to enable this in the field is Java and then just basically EA, enable assertions, and then um, assertion one, right? And that's all we need to do. Now assertions will be enabled. The JVM will say, okay, I'm going to go ahead and, uh, you know, execute any assertions. And we get, boom, right there. Exception in thread main, java.lang.assertion error, which is what I was telling you about. And then you see, uh-oh, unexpected result in state, null yes, add assertion one dot main, and it tells us the line number right there. Line number 10, right? As you can see, that's line number 10, okay? All right, so that is basically how they work. Now, there's a couple different flavors of them, and I'll go over that in, um, in part two of the tutorial here, but I'm gonna go ahead and get this off screen and get that off screen, just leave you guys with some final thoughts on this one, so. It is pretty cool that we can debug our program on the fly in a live production type setting. Now, careful planning in the design phase is key to making assertions part of your debugging arsenal. Now, stay tuned for more tutorials on the subject where I will discuss proper usage and improper usage of the assert statement. That concludes this tutorial. Thanks for watching.